Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Nigel here from Nigel's Modeling Bench. Um, it's been five days since I uploaded the last video on this. Today is May the 20th. Um, the last time I uploaded part 9 was on May the 15th. So this is going to be part 10. And this is going to see us with all the white paint on, I think. Uh, not sure how long it's going to be because I'm going to be spraying this outside. The weather's lovely and warm at the moment. Um, I've just sanded all that and fared all that and I'm quite happy with how it's going to look. I think that's going to be fine. So um, yeah, a bit of work required there to get a nice joint in there. If you remember, I finished off the last video with some Mr. Surfacer in there. And then uh, when we get some white primer on there, then we'll see what it looks like. But I'm basically going to use white primer out of an aerosol can now and just paint it all really. Um, so I need to fix this on. Um, this just absolutely glues on with no real positive location at all. It's got these two tabs in here. So I'm just going to fit that tab into there and just put that in there and try and get these groove things to line up. But they're not really on here. It's like raised plastic ribs. And these are those stepped grooves that we saw before. So I'm not really sure how good it's going to look or not. Um, but anyway, as I said, this has become a basically a presentation kind of demonstration toy, if you like, rather than a accurate model, because it in no way represents any actual um, Saturn V that ever flew a manned mission. So because it's got the eight on here it's got the eight on stage two well on the stage interstage sorry it's got the uh, the eight rockets which only appeared on i believe one or two and then it's got the one command module uh, and there's some other errors with it as well other pretty major errors with it as well so uh yeah accuracy has got out the window on this one but at the end of the day it is going to be a model a really nice model have a good old Saturn V and I think it's going to look lovely, I hope. But basically this has been, if you remember, this has been a exercise in seams, working with seams, working with these big tubes, you know, so it applies to anybody that's building submarines or big ship, ship hull halves or, you know, long airliners or whatever. If you're doing a big 747 or something. It's the same thing so there we go so that's that done and that's glued on I'm putting plenty of glue in because I want it to be a nice strong joint I don't want it all to if it ever does get knocked over I don't want all the joints to just shatter apart okay so that's that done so now we are ready so go out in the garage and get some primer on this and this time I'm going to be using white primer and then I'm going to rub it all down then do the black bits mask the black bit well mask around for the black bits then mask the black bits up and then do the uh, and then do the um, the white finally and there she is guys all ready to go for primer there you are okay so here we are um, I took it out in the garage I painted it with white primer and it came out glossy yeah I don't know um, and the paint was also extremely thin so you can see it ran here on the edges so I've had to sand this off or it curtain sorry should I say not ran so I've had to sand this out um, it's also attacked the plastic by the look of it so all in all a real success story. The other thing it did was it glued the stages together. So I've gone round with some Mr. Surfacer on a cotton bud and melted the paint and managed to get these apart. But to be honest, I'm not really too worried about stage two because the, the engines in there are such a mess anyway. So and the also there's um is it this one that's got a hole in it, hasn't it? Um but no there's uh I don't know, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it anyway, stage two coming apart. Basically, you can sort of tell people that it went up, this came off, this came off, and then this came off, and then this is the bit that everyone's interested in, only when that opens up, and blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, I'll just give you an idea of how it's going to look with the, uh, the CSM on there. It does look quite good. 
get this uh, get this blue tack out of here and then that will go in there like so and it does actually fit really nicely he says there we go and that just screws onto there and then that goes on there so you can see that the Overall, this um, this top end looks really, really nice. Bit of care and attention on the CSM. Bit of metal coat on the uh, command module, and you're away. So um, it's really coming together, guys. But once again, I'm now going to have to leave this for I don't know 24, 48 hours because this paint still feels a bit tacky. So uh, yeah, moral of the story: don't use a tin of paint that you don't know how long you've had or if it's been subject to freezing temperatures and things like that, which is probably why this has acted like it has. Um, but I know that it definitely, on the can, said um, white plastic primer. Now, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I swap the lids over or something. I don't know. But it's certainly not, um, that's certainly not white plastic primer there. It's, uh, it's glossy. And, um, and you can see by the way it's curtained on here that that's, you know, matte paints don't tend to do that. And also the way it's attacked here is crazy. But luckily it hasn't attacked the seams. I've just gone over quickly with a sponge on the seams. Um, you know, thinking, oh God, if it's attacked the seams, I really am back to square one. But uh, yeah, it hasn't. So I'm going to leave this now for 24, 48 hours. And then I'm going to give it another matte coat of the uh, Mr. Surfacer white. Um, which should be easy to cover now and then I'll at least have a base that I can work with rather than this glossy sticky tacky mess and this all goes back together like so and there we go that goes in there and that'll look lovely so um yeah in the meantime as well I'm also on this thing this kit is a complete dog but we're getting there um, Mr. Surfacer Heaven this model is so um, yeah and they're both the same scale look so it just shows you how big the space shuttle was doesn't it it's absolutely huge right finally we're back back on this kit again um, and it's been oh a nightmare but basically we've got there and what I've done I've painted all this with the Mr. Hobby base white um, you can still see the black coming through where that aerosol can attacked it so um yeah so basically i'm sort of ready now to start putting on some tape and mask and do the black bits and then we'll mask the black and do the white bits again with some uh, xf2 so um let me get some masking done okay we're all masked up now and what i've done is basically i've got my tamiya tape here in the good bits cheap tape in between and then paper on the large bits that are to remain white um, or white should I say sorry um, main things to remember uh, make sure your masking tape is pushed well in and for that what I do is I get a cocktail stick and just run it up and down the tape just before you spray there's no, no point doing it you know and then leaving it for 24 hours you need to do it just before you spray and that will help to seal the tape in, in those um, in those grooved areas the other tip I would give you is spray it white first and that will seal in any bits where the paint is going to bleed and then what will bleed through is white paint and then when you spray it black you shouldn't get any uh, black bleeding um, the other thing I've got is this uh, Mr. Hobby um, Mr. Masking Sol Neo it's really good stuff it's very thick very very gloopy um, you can see there but it's very uh, malip <laughs> manipulative I don't know but once it's on you can sort of push it around and, and where you don't want it and stuff and um, yeah so I've got it in there like where there's in there here where it's difficult to get any tape in there and know that you because what you don't want to find is you know you might have got this edge really really good but then when you spray the black you'll find you've got black fogging all up behind this paper here where it's gone up in so it's good to uh, make sure those little gaps are sealed um, the other thing is I've decided this is going to be um, depicting Apollo 4 although it's inaccurate in many many ways um, I've decided that it's going to depict Apollo 4 because in this um, first edition of Airfix Model World magazine there is a feature about the uh, building the Apollo um, the uh, Apollo um, 
Saturn Saturn Five, sorry, Apollo Eleven, uh, Saturn Five um, rocket. And uh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think ahead here and baffling. Um, the picture here, if you're going to do this, this is Apollo Four. So I started masking away, and I thought this is a bit weird. I'm sure that these black segments here were always to the to the left of the um, of the tail cones parts, and then I looked to this. I thought it's very strange because they're they're not. They're on the right hand side, and then I started looking and hang on a minute. And if you look closely at this photograph, I don't think you can see it on the camera, but this photograph has actually been reversed. It, the actual S is the back wrong way round. So this. Um, this photograph is uh, is incorrect um, so it's actually a mirror image they've got the um, the, uh, the the negative uh, backwards when they put the photo in the magazine so if you're going to do this one go online have a look and um, and check out your references the reason I've chosen the Apollo 4 is just purely because if I look up here it looks like it's got a block one um, command service module on it so it's kind of correct I don't know I mean remember accuracy is not a thing with this model um this is all about how to build one nicely and get nice seams and everything uh, which which we've shown you and which we've actually achieved and now it's all about masking and getting a, a good finish on our paint so um there are differences if you look around um if you look at the revel instructions uh they tell you to put a black band here which is incorrect um, so be careful of that and also on here there's no real um, reference that shows you where you are um, what is what or what point of the, the I mean they've got this little lump here and here this umbilical but um, there's nothing else on that it sort of shows you really where you are and the other reason I chose Apollo 4 of course is because it's got the eight um, little rocket motors on the uh, interstate so it's kind of getting there towards the accuracy of things so um yeah i'm not suggesting you buy this magazine it is an interesting little uh, feature from matt urban on building the um and correcting the the airfix apollo uh, saturn 5 i mean um i think it's probably a nicer kit than the um revel uh, because they actually added the block 2 service module but the command module is well undersized apparently so uh, there we go. So I'll get on and um, do some painting and perhaps show you what I do there. As I mentioned before, I'm going to go around with the cocktail stick and just push the tape into all those grooves right before I do my painting. Okay, so that's all done there. That's all down nicely. That looks like it's not very straight. There is actually a white tape underneath there, which is straight. You can probably see the edge there. So there is a white tape there. So what I'm going to do, I've got some XF2 roughly 60% paint, 40% thinners, Mr. Hobby thinners, and I'm just going to very lightly go over all the edges of all the tape with the white, and hopefully that will see that any, any areas where the paint's going to bleed, it will bleed through with white and seal the area that is bled. Okay, and I'm purposely actually spraying into the tape to encourage it to go in any gaps. The same up here. Well, we should be fine with this one because it's um, it's the tabby of vinyl tape and it's on a smooth surface. I'm just going to concentrate on that area there where the joint is. Concentrate around there a bit. <clears throat> and there you go, you can see that's all sealed in now. Okay. Right, that's all done now. So that's all um, painted now with the white around the edges of the masking tape. And you can see where they, it starts to lift already. You need to be really on this and pushing it down. And um, yeah, just go around and just see that, you know, you, you haven't got any edges lifting up like I have there. And then when we spray the black, what we do is go very, very careful and put on very dry coats, sort of spraying away from the masking tape where possible because we really don't want to have to um, try and cover any black with white because it's an absolute nightmare. And um, then when we do the black, when, we, when we're ready to uh, spray the white, sorry, we mask the black, obviously we can't do this and go around the masking tape with black because then we'll have to cover black. So what we'll do then is we use clear. Um, just use some um, 
probably semi-gloss clear go around the edge of the masking tape seal it in and then spray our white and if we do get any bleed through of white onto black it's just going to be a case of touching it in with a brush and um, for that reason I'm going to use I'm not going to use XF1 I'm going to use X18 X18 is a it's it's a semi-gloss black um, from Tamiya and it's very um, it's a lot more hard wearing than the XF1 and also when you brush paint another black onto it it looks better when you brush paint over the X1 it's kind of a different color black if you know what I mean um, maybe one day I can show you on something but um, yeah if, if we decide to go over with some of the Revell black uh, you know thinned with water just to cover up any little areas then it will blend into the X18 a lot better than it would into the XF1 so I need to let this dry now just for an hour or so and then we'll go over with the uh, with the black right so that's been drying now for about an hour so I've got some X18 in here mixed roughly 50 50 with some um, I've used the AK high compatibility thinner but it doesn't really matter what you use so what I'm going to do is just on this piece here I'll do this on camera I'll do the rest off um, what I'm going to do is very lightly spray this around the edges first and I'm just going to check my tape check my tape is all good so that's okay and now what I'm going to do is just I can see it's just lifted there it's lifted there a little bit so I'll push that down a bit on the end and I'm just going to lightly paint very lightly I'm going to flood it and you can see that if you look close you can see that if you stay pointing the paint away from the masking tape then you don't get a build up of paint on the edge of the tape Same around there. Now on these little panels I'm going to stay 90 degrees to them. Same here, 90 degrees. 90 degrees here. Okay, another coat on around there. And at roughly 15 psi, so a bit heavy there. And then I'm going to turn it over and do the same on this edge. Although this edge is a lot less important because it's much easier for the tape to seal on a smooth flat surface. There we go. You see, just laying it on thin layers, just laying it on. Build it up slowly. And on here, you've got these ridges, you need to come in at angles to make sure we get them. Because if you remember from the build, they're not actually direct ridges, they're actually like wedges. So if you just spray it 90 degrees, you're not necessarily going to get the whole thing coloured. So. I need to change my angles, make sure we get good coverage. Now the paint will be um, drying in where, anywhere where it could have bled through. So it's pretty much sealed now. So now we can actually start to get some paint on there. And make sure we get in all the nooks and crannies. Just remember this is black and white and it needs to have really really good demarcation and definition and you can't use the excuse that it's weathered because it wouldn't have been It's a good idea when you're doing fine stuff like this, every now and again, just to come along and 
just give the airbrush a blast through and then what you need to do is after you done that don't ever go straight to where you're painting come off I'll show you what happens that's what happens after you've blasted paint through that's what happens you get that spattering so you see you paint then you get spatter best thing to do is come away from the model and then just start to paint like that and then you get the spatter going elsewhere and there we go that's that pretty much done I can leave that now give it a quick coat second coat in a minute and uh, now I need to get the rest of these parts painted okay then guys so it's uh, moment of truth time it's paint spill in about 20 minutes so it's um, sort of tacked off uh, it's a good idea to get your masking off as quick as you can because um, if you let the paint fully harden sometimes it can actually peel the edge of the paint up uh, especially if you haven't got a very good bond on the uh, substrate below so it's often a good idea to do this as soon as you can after painting and what you're going to end up with is a huge pile about 100 pounds worth of masking tape on this one um, so I'm going to grab a cocktail stick for doing my picking with so we could just peel that one away there and then we'll find the end of this vinyl tape that I put down here and we'll see how we've gone with our actually I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers um, because I don't want to risk sliding off and scratching the paint there's that one you can see we've got a nice clean edge there rather other than a tiny bit of bleed there where we had the joint in the tape but that's okay that's fine that's going to be easy to cover up now we've got these tiny little bits here that I masked up so they can come away and these were quite difficult to mask because some of them on one edge sort of sort of kind of fell right on the edge of the, the groove that's below it and it was quite difficult to cut the tape but um, probably a lot of this is from where I haven't pushed the tape there well enough just before I started you can see I put a little scratch in the black paint there so there's a little touch up going to be needed um, so then let's now get all this major part off start on the Tamiya tape and you can see we've got a pretty clean edge there it's, um, that's been quite successful particularly you know considering it's over all the serrated edges and the same there so we're gonna have to do a bit of touch up there that hasn't been particularly well masked but that's my fault and we can see we got a bit of a underneath there so a little bit of touch up needed there but that's fine that's going to be absolutely fine so let's do one of these for you and then I'll do the rest off camera so we'll see how this came out this was quite awkward this bit because it's all stepped oh no that was that bit that was a step that was on stage two I'll grab the tape from under here so that's pretty good a nice clean line there get this tape up from under here nice clean on that and we can see there I don't know if you can pick that out but you can see where the white paint has bled under the tape and it's stopped the black from coming in behind it so it's worth doing the, uh, the little thing I showed you so just rip off the main tape like that and then we can take off 
that piece and again you can see where it's bled through and you can see we got some bleed through there but so uh, those tiny little bits aren't going to matter it's the big when it the whole lot flows out of some it's, it's the biggest problem so i'll go on and get the rest of this unmasked rather than uh give you death by boredom from masking from watching me do this and uh i'll come back right on the whole not a bad job uh, not a brilliant job either this area up here is quite nice bit of a step there i need to sort out um, but all the masking the edges are nice and clean um, down in here i could have done some better masking there and there and there and also pretty poor in here um, i was concentrating so much on getting tape in there and not having the, the paint go up through so um, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it so I'm gonna have to go around now with a brush um, perhaps mix up some x18 with water and just just brush it in into these little corners and stuff um, and then you can see there where I've got some um, you know the, the the tape was bent over so it's got like a shadow effect on it so that just needs a brush in but it's gonna get a coat of clear anyway after it's all done after the white and everything's done to seal it all in and get ready for our decals so um yeah, quite pleased with the way this has come out. The stage one is uh, still got a bit of tape on it there. Get that off. So that's looking pretty good. Um, that line there is actually going straight up the seam line by the look of it. The seam's here somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's looking quite nice. And you saw this one. This needs a touch up with a, with a brush. And the other thing I want to try and do, where there's black paint where it shouldn't be, I should be able to come with a toothpick. And just scrape it away like that or well, the majority of it at least and it'll make it a bit easier to cover them when i go over with the white so it'll also be easier to mask and spray the white than it was uh, you know mask it negatively rather than positively so there we go so overall i'm happy um i might be able to scratch that away with a cocktail stick there we go so you see just no, I've scratched too far into the black so I have to touch that up but um you can see you can just scratch the paint off so that mr uh, mr base white is very good stuff so that's going to go on there like like that so that's so we can see how the top stage is looking or the stage three and stage two and then this is going to go on here, he says, like that. So without me moving the camera, you can see how she's going to look. I just do that under the camera for you and come back the other way. There we are. So yeah, all in all, not a bad job at all. So we'll call that a day for part five because I'm now going to have to leave this for at least a day to dry off before I start messing with it. Um, and I want to sort of, you know, make sure it's all good. Um, so, yeah, we'll leave it like that for now. And uh, part six will be up with you. I don't know when, but part six is going to be the finish. I'll get the white done. We'll get the clear coat done. We'll get the decals on. Probably give it a wash just to make it a bit, bit less sort of toy like. Um, just to make it more like a, a model and then uh, I'm going to go from there so thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, maybe you've learned a little bit about how to and how not to mask and uh, like I said if you work from that Airfix magazine beware that photo is backwards so um, don't ask me how I know all right so I'll see you later bye